Okay, look, I know my setup may look crazy, it may look like there's a lot of money into this, but when it comes to the dual PC setup, it's actually the cheapest part. I mean, like my desk costs more than my streaming PC does. Now, some of you may know by now that I'm not typically a big fan of dual PC streaming setups, or at least the hype around them. I truly believe in 2024 that the majority of aspiring creators and streamers can just put all their focus and money into one PC and do everything that they need at their level. You don't need to stream 1440p. You don't need to record 4K footage if you're not an established creator, at least in my opinion. I just think for most people, dual PC setups are over glorified. They cost more money in the long run, more cables, more headaches, more electricity, just overall the, the checklist doesn't make sense, again, for the majority of people. But let's talk about why I switched in my dual PC setup budgeting guide for 2025. So one of the biggest reasons why I personally haven't liked dual PC streaming setups in my experience throughout the years is the the management of things, the the cables, the, the capture card, the audio interface, it's just added shit that I don't really care for. And for a while now, I've been mainly doing just chatting streams. I've veered away from doing the gaming content, so I haven't really needed to have anything too crazy. If I wanted to just hop on and play some games for the viewers, I could do that. But I actually found a way for dual PC streaming setups to bypass capture cards, audio interfaces, and just use my ethernet and software to stream at the highest quality, at the highest resolution, frames, bit rate, and the lowest audio latency from one computer to another. By the way, this video is a one of like three part series. So depending on the time of you watching it, either A, I have a setup video coming, like actually showing you my setup, like everything that I have in here and showing you what software and programs I use for the dual PC setup, showing you exactly how to set that stuff up. So if those videos aren't out yet, be sure to subscribe so that way you don't miss them. And if they are out by now, I will leave a link in the description for those videos. Anyways, back into why I decided to dive deeper into the dual PC streaming setup now that I've found the software Moonlight, so that way I don't need a capture card. Over the last couple of months, I've really been enjoying streaming. The community has been growing over there. I on kick contrary to popular belief a lot of people enjoy watching me over there it's just a chill place where we play video games hang out just do chatting so i've really transitioned to being a full-time streamer and with that i started creating more content again on my second gaming channel so now that i'm recording content on top of streaming and I'm playing different games like Gray Zone Warfare and Delta Force, for example. My setup required a little bit more resources, especially if I wanted to produce higher quality content, which by the way, if you enjoy any of that content, be sure to subscribe to my gaming channel linked in the description down below. But considering I had PC parts laying around and I'm trying to stream more and create content around that and record high quality footage, Considering that I'm full time with this, it just made sense for me to transition to the dual PC setup, especially now that I don't have the damn headache of all these fucking cables and bullshit around the desk. So now let's talk about why you may need to move to a dual PC setup. I mean, the obvious thing is the power offered between two computers for seamless streaming is a huge benefit. You avoid so much lag, stuttering, potential performance issues by separating the gaming and streaming between two machines. You enhance both audio and video for more polished streaming quality. And also here's the big thing for a lot of people that want to grow as a content creator, you also record higher quality footage for content as well. Let's say you're finally growing a community on Kick, Twitch, and YouTube, and you want to start taking things to new levels, but you're tired of using the kind of shitty downgraded resolution clips that you get from streams. Breaking into the dual PC streaming world, even on a budget, allows you to open up things to have way more control over every box that you can check off in that arena. On top of that, one of the things that a lot of people don't discuss 
when talking dual PC setups. It's just like the fucking organization is so good. Being able to have one computer dedicated to gaming and another computer dedicated to content, like it creates way less bloat on the gaming PC. And then having this other entire dedicated machine for the business side, I guess you'd say for the streaming software, for all the clips, all the bullshit, it just helps with workflow. And one of the biggest things that I suggest to content creators for growing their brands is workflow. You gotta be efficient, you gotta be consistent and efficient. And I would be lying if I said that putting everything on one machine and trying to keep it organized in one place isn't annoying. Having a place where I can go, I can game, the only thing that I worry about is like graphics card updates and game updates, that's it. And then having a completely different setup where all my folders are game highlight clips, stream stuff, Discord shit. It's a huge quality of life benefit for those aspiring content creators that wanna take streaming and content more serious. So maybe your streams are growing and you've got a little community growing as well on some social media platforms and you wanna start creating content for them. And all this is already bringing in revenue. So you want to reinvest back into it. So that way you can produce higher quality stuff. Maybe then at that moment, it might be time for you to move into a dual PC streaming setup. But I do wanna point out that I still stand by the idea that Look, if you're just starting off, you don't really have a following, you don't have any viewers, don't stress about that stupid shit yet. Don't stress about the gear and the quality. Like, lower the resolution, stream at 720p, have a good microphone, and be yourself. Those are the two important things. Like, just have something that somebody can come and talk to you on, and that's fucking it. That's the bare minimum to start off with. Don't worry about trying to be the next Shroud or Ninja or Tim the Tap Man. Just grab a cam, a half-assed PC, lower the quality, lower the resolution, and just make streaming fun for you. Now, putting together a budget streaming setup uh, involves choosing the right hardware. The big thing is doing a little research and identifying the essential components to the gaming PC and the streaming PC. That way you optimize both setups individually on a budget. When you actually look into the affordable options for each individual build, like gaming PC versus streaming PC, one, you realize how cheap it actually is to build two individually. And two, it also opens up this arena where you no longer have to stress about getting rid of old parts because essentially what you can do over time is you can take your main rig or your main PC and you can convert that. That's actually what I do right now. So what I mean by that is I'm a full-time creator. Like I do this for a living and pretty successfully, I might say. Out of the two computers, my gaming PC is the most expensive one. My MacBook and Mac Studio cost more than my gaming PC. And the only reason my gaming PC costs $2,700 is because I splurged this year after doing a brand deal with Asus and got a 4080 Super. The previous card I had in my gaming PC worked just fine. It was a 3060. Those cost like a couple hundred dollars. So realistically, I could have a solid gaming setup for like $1,800 as a full-time creator. And again, I can't express for like a gaming PC, that's overkill. I actually found this uh, budget gaming PC list on PC Part Tracker where you can add a 4060 to the list, which is around like $300. So then after you add the 4060 to the list, the total PC build would be around like 700 to $750. So you could build the dedicated gaming PC for like 700 to $800, depending on part differences. And then honestly, you could take that list do the same thing for the stream PC, kind of prioritize some different things for the benefits on like what you want for each one. And uh, don't sleep on used parts. I know that's like really like frowned upon. Like, look, you can definitely take risk with this, but through the years, I've bought countless used PC parts on eBay and like refurbished return open box parts on Amazon as well, even camera gear. Now I'm gonna be honest, I personally have never had a bad experience, but I've heard of like bad experiences. But as long as you go through most of these sites and not like a marketplace, most places have a protection where like, if you get in the part and it doesn't work, you can just return it. And like the buyer has to receive it. So now you don't need to buy everything brand new. You can actually shop around on some really cheap stuff. Then you put your focus into building a budget friendly streaming PC, which I would argue that you could probably do for even less. Honestly, you could take the same list in the description of the video for gaming, and you could just prioritize a better CPU and lower the GPU and you would be fine. You could still get a 700 to $800 
streaming PC setup. So all in cost would be like $1,500 for both PCs. And again, the great thing with the streaming PC is you can essentially just use that as your hand-me-down. PC or like whatever your main rig has been for years, instead of trying to part that PC out or, or sell it whole, you can just use that as your streaming PC. That's actually what I did. I mean, even my PC build is a pretty solid budget suggestion. To be honest, it's a little bit more expensive than the other PC that I linked, but I think all in my streaming PC can be built for like $1,100. Now you gotta take in mind that I don't even consider that budget. I mean, I guess it's kind of budget, but like, I can stream at 1080, 60 FPS to multiple sites, like multi-streaming, and I can record at the highest resolution at 1440p, 60 FPS for my gaming content. And that's on an $1,100 build. But the biggest tip when it comes to the stream PC is prioritizing mainly the GPU, the CPU, and the RAM. You essentially just wanna make sure the streaming PC has three of those decent, items in it just mainly something that can do basic video encoding for streaming and recording and on top of that where so many people go wrong don't splurge on the stupid shit like your mouse and keyboard and all that stuff for the stream pc it doesn't matter so you may have watched my 2025 setup video and you can see that this is my editing station over here, the ultra wide monitor. And I have a wireless mouse and keyboard that I use for that. The dope thing about this mouse and keyboard is they have three input options so I can sync these to three devices. So I don't even have a dedicated mouse and keyboard for my stream setup. I just use my editing mouse and keyboard and switch it over to my stream PC whenever I go live. But you could find like a $20 wireless mouse and keyboard from Amazon that's like tiny and compact and you can just throw in the corner so that way it's just not taking up a whole bunch of desk space and you're not wasting money on it. Now, a huge part about budgeting your dual PC streaming setup is the software. I mean, obviously software is pretty important because I'm using software to capture my gaming PC to my stream PC and the highest quality that I've ever used. Again, make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you can check out how I actually set that up or check the link in the description if that video is already out. But outside of that, people don't realize that the software that you use for streaming, like OBS and Streamlabs, for example, they both have a lot of included benefits in their products. Like after you've installed the software, you can just optimize your PC for the dedicated thing. And it will actually check your internet the parts and it will set it up based around what you have in your build. I will be honest, I typically set my stuff up the way that I want, but that's because I have like 10 years of experience in using these programs. So I know how I want my settings. And again, I don't really have budget builds. Even though my builds are cheaper in comparison to like high-end PCs, the streaming PC that I have can handle a lot of shit. So I don't really have to like optimize everything down, but people do sleep on this a lot. Like you can set up your streaming software in a negative way to hurt your performance of your streams. So setting up audio routing, scene transitions, like what you have on your scenes, like everything adds up. The more shit, the more clutter, the more stuff you have, the more that the PC has to process, the more that you're throwing at it. So using the software in itself to optimize everything, to have the best, smoothest performance is, is really crucial. You wanna find that perfect balance of, sure, making yourself look professional, but not overloading OBS or Streamlabs to just kill the stream quality. Again, the big goal with being a creator is just being able to be present with your fucking chat, with your community. A lot of the fluff, a lot of the bullshit that people stress about, like making sure you have the highest quality out the gate, even if you are on a budget setup, or making sure you have like scene transitions and trying to look cool as fuck. A lot of that doesn't matter. Most people are just trying to come through your community to just vibe out and get to learn a little bit more about you, your hobbies, your interests, just who you are as a person. So don't sleep on the software. Just because you build a dual PC setup on a budget doesn't mean you can just throw whatever you want at the software and just make it completely random and turn everything up to the highest megabits and the highest quality. like learn the stuff a little bit, use the automatic settings that they do have. Final tips for budgeting down on a dual PC setup is setting it up the right way, the little things that, that make a big difference. For example, I highly recommend don't use Wi-Fi for shit. I know this may be tough for some people, you may be far away from your router or your modem, but I highly encourage you to do ethernet on both devices. Uh, in fact, you'll see when I make my video on Moonlight, the software that I use to capture uh, my gaming footage to the stream PC, 
that actually works via the ethernet cable. Both of the computers being plugged into the ethernet ports, that's how the data is actually captured. But regardless, even if you're using a capture card, you're gonna experience the lowest latency between the computers by using your ethernet port. You'd be surprised how much taking that load off of a Wi-Fi connection helps with the performance of things and just the overall uh, efficiency. But yeah, then it comes down to setting up the right software for each, like I said earlier, organizing things. Like you just don't need certain things on your gaming computer versus your streaming computer uh, and vice versa. You don't need all the gaming bloat on your stream computer. So there's no need to install any of that junk there. Depending how you have it set up, if you're using an audio interface or, or not like me, I have my microphone routed to my streaming PC. So I don't have Discord and other junk on my gaming PC. Making sure drivers are up to date for both, optimizing your gaming settings so that way you take less load and the, the data transferring between two machines. And a big tip, being organized, like knowing exactly what plugs into what. It is crazy how fast in a dual PZ streaming setup where you could have the wrong thing plugged into the wrong area or just not plugged in at all. Like you thought it was plugged in because everything's just so fucking chaotic and it could just throw everything off. Like two examples, I remember one time somebody had their monitor plugged into the cam link and the, the cable from their camera, the HDMI from their camera plugged into the PC and they were fucking stumped for so long, but both cables looked the same. Or another one, which I can't believe I have to tell a lot of people, but I guess I get it. Make sure you're not plugging your display port or your HDMI into the mother port, display port or HDMI. Make sure you're plugging that into the GPU of the computer. Like that's a notorious, up and comer bug that a lot of people do. It's, I know it sounds crazy to the people that understand this, but you gotta understand that coming into this world, there's not a lot of tech savvy people. A lot of this can be intimidating and people are experiencing this for the first time. All right, gang, that's my budget dual PC stream setup guy for 2025. Again, depending on the timing that you're watching this video, check the description down below. I'll have a stream setup video so you can see exactly how I have my stuff set up and a complete guide on how I use Moonlight, which is the software instead of using a capture card or audio interface. If those aren't out yet, subscribe. Forehead, what are you doing? All right, like, comment, subscribe. That's all I got for you guys today. I'm up, peace, deuces.